done yet, Shelby. Hi, Mia. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. We are starting the week again, and it's Monday. Monday morning. Hi, Joe. Hello. It's Monday morning, October 9. Tomorrow is the birthday of Jacob. It is? It is. So we have two Octobers. October 7 and October 10. So last Saturday, we celebrated Mia's birthday by going on a pilgrimage to a shrine of Our Lady. And yeah, we got some time to... John's incredible pizza. Okay, so are we ready? Are we 1,000 tickets? Are we awake enough? Let's go and read the gospel already, okay? The gospel is from St. Luke, chapter 10, verse 25 to 37. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test Jesus and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, You shall love thy Lord, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, by, Jesus replies by giving uh, a parable. A man fell victim to robbers, and he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and beat him, and went off leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the road, but when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Now, but a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds, and bandaged him. Then he lifted him up, on his own animal, took him to an inn and cared for him. The next day, he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instructions, take care of him. If you spend more than, I, than what I had given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which, which of these three, <clears throat> in your opinion, was neighbor to the robber's victim. He answered, the one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. So who is our neighbor? Who is our neighbor? That was the question that this, uh, that this person asked Jesus in order to test him. Okay? Who is my neighbor? And then Jesus answered by way of a parable. Right? So, but what was the lesson that our Lord wanted us to understand today? Who is our neighbor? Who do you think is your neighbor? Huh? Everybody. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Of course. But our Lord wants us to pay special attention to, to those who are poor. Yeah. But not only those who are poor, but to those who are sick. Sick. Okay. Those who are in need. Right. Those who are in need. Those are our neighbors. In need of what? You might ask, in need of what? In need of love, Joe? Yeah? What else? In need of hope? Yes? What else? Care. Care, yes, Mia? In need of care? You. 
in need of you, <laughs> in need of me. <laughs> huh? What else? You know, people who need people who need friendship. There you go. People who need attention. People who need consolation. People who need understanding. People who need hearing. <laughs> oh, healing! Yes, Chevelle, healing. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I already need hearing. Maybe <laughs> sorry, I didn't understand you. Okay, people who need forgiveness. Okay? People who need compassion. People who might need material things in life. Okay, these are the people in need. And where do you find these kinds of people? On the street? <laughs> yes, that's true. You may find them on the street. But you know where else, Mia? Houses. In houses, yes. And in the first place, in which house? Church. Your house. Your house. Your house. Right here in our own home. Okay? Right here in our own home. You would find your own neighbor in need okay right here in your own home so many times many times it's we we uh, we uh we tend to be like this uh like this uh pharisees who say you know who, who is my neighbor they try to pretend that they don't know who their neighbor is right but that's why they have to test jesus with that and with that question and jesus gives them a very a very obvious answer and that is well you know anybody in need around you anybody in need around you and the first people that we need to minister to that we need to attend to with mercy are those right in our own household right right in our own home now um, but our lord gives us a very clear criterion about how uh, to attend to our neighbor okay and our lord says our neighbor, our neighbor, is the one who needs mercy. Okay? That is why that is why the gospel reads. Okay, uh, or or when he asked he asked who among these three was neighbor. Then the answer of the man was the one who treated him with mercy, and our Lord says, "Go and do likewise." Go and do likewise. Treat your neighbor with mercy. With mercy. Treat your neighbor with a compassionate heart. Okay? With compassion. That's what mercy is all about. Now, uh, is that easy to do? Is it easy to show mercy to our neighbors? Huh? Not quite, right? Not quite. And why is it not easy to show mercy to our neighbors? Because they offend us. Because they offend us? Well, sometimes, sometimes okay. But, uh, okay, what else? What are the reasons? They're ugly. <laughs> because they're ugly, Chevelle. Chevelle. Why is it, why is it not easy to show, to show mercy to your neighbors? Huh? Because what, Mia? We tend, to be we tend to be selfish. We tend to be proud. Eh? We tend to be selfish. We tend to be proud. That's why, what, what did our Lord say? Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Mm -hmm. Right? Because if you love yourself too much that you want to confine yourself to yourself, well, our Lord says, that is the way you love your neighbor. With the same intensity that you love yourself, then love your neighbor in the same way because having mercy means means precisely to forego your own love for self okay if that is how much you love yourself that you that you want to confine yourself only to doing things that please you well that's exactly the kind of mercy you should you should you should uh, show to another person to your neighbor Okay? So, forgetting about oneself. Now, that may not be very easy to do. Right? But you know, here's the trick. Every time you find it difficult to show mercy to another person, 
and to treat your neighbor with love. The way, the way to, uh, the way to try to help yourself with that is to always remember that you yourselves, we ourselves, each one of us, are beneficiaries of mercy. Right? We ourselves are beneficiaries of mercy. Mercy from whom? God. From God. Right? From Jesus Christ who saved us from our sins. From Jesus Christ who died on the cross to save us from our sins. So if we ourselves are beneficiaries of this mercy, well, who are we not to have mercy on others? Okay? Who are we not to have mercy on others? Who are we not to show compassion on other people? When we ourselves are beneficiaries of divine mercy. Okay? So in following Jesus' example, we also should show mercy to others. Right? Now, the church has lined up for us okay, two, two uh, categories of uh, the kinds of mercies that we can extend to people. Yeah. Can we review that? Can we review those? Uh, what, what do we call those, uh, those kinds of mercies that the church recommends we, uh, we express to other, towards other people and to show them? What are those? Joe? Spiritual works of mercy, okay, Joe and Jacob, the corporal works of mercy. Spiritual works of mercy and corporal works of mercy, okay? Those are the two kinds of, or categories of mercy that are, well, in keeping with the two general needs that people have, right? Uh, man is composed of body and soul. So we have both material needs and spiritual needs. Okay? And to show mercy to others means taking care of body and soul okay? of our neighbors. In the same manner that the, 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 the robber was treated uh, that way, right? His wounds and his, his, um, his bodily needs was attended to by this Samaritan. Okay? So, uh, we'll answer that question next time. So... Corporal works of mercy and spiritual works of mercy. Now, can we review what these are? By the way, folks, these are all in the catechism. Okay? The corporal works of mercy and the spiritual works of mercy can be found on part three of the catechism. On that chapter, Life in Christ. You can look it up. But here we're going to enumerate what those uh, 14 works of mercy are. Seven for the corporal, seven for the spiritual works of mercy. Okay, so let's start with the corporal works of mercy. The things that we need, our neighbors need bodily. Okay? Uh, what are the corporal works of mercy? Can you identify some? Visiting yeah. the Visiting the sick. Well, yeah. Uh, caring for the sick. That's how, the, that's, how, uh, that's how it is. Caring for the sick. Because uh, there's the other one which is also a visit. But it's more for the imprisoned. Okay. Visiting the imprisoned, caring for the sick. What else? Feeding, Feeding the hungry. Right. Clothing, the naked. Clothing the naked. What else? Giving drink to the thirsty. <clears throat> what else? Visiting the dead. Praying for the dead. No, oh, well, not, not quite, not quite. That's a spiritual work of mercy, but you can bury the dead, okay? Burying the dead is a corporal work of mercy. And the last one being shelter the homeless, okay? To shelter the homeless or to provide uh, shelter for, for others who might be in need of shelter, right? So those are the seven corporal works of mercy. Now let's go to the spiritual works of mercy. What are the spiritual works of mercy? Okay. Huh? Praying for the dead. There you go. Not only the dead, but also the living. Praying for the living and the dead. Praying for the poor. Yeah, that's the living. What else? Instructing the ignorant. Okay? Or sharing your knowledge to people. Not being selfish with what you know. Okay? 
not being selfish with what you know. Sharing your knowledge to people is a, a spiritual work of mercy. What else? Giving advice or counseling the doubtful. Okay? Counseling the doubtful is a spiritual work of mercy. Okay? When you try to help people uh, understand their, uh, you know, their situations in life, the difficulties that they, that they uh, encounter in life. When you comfort the suffering, okay? comfort the suffering, that's another spiritual work of mercy. When you exercise patience on others, when you exercise patience on others, that is another spiritual work of mercy. What else? When you forgive those who offend you, when you, your readiness to forgive, even if the other person is not asking for forgiveness, See? That is a spiritual work of mercy. The readiness to forgive all the time. See? That's another tough thing to do. But yes, that is a, an expression of mercy for, for a person uh, who might have offended you one way or another. See? Seventh is to admonish the sinner. To admonish the sinner or to correct people who are in error. See? Well, what, sometimes you might think, well, what do I care if they, if they are in error or they commit sin? That's their own lookout, right? That's their own responsibility. Well, but apparently here, uh, you know, the church is telling us, well, no, it is our obligation. It is a work of mercy to correct those who are in error. See? That is why our Lord teaches us about fraternal correction. Something that we already talked about, right? Uh, fraternal correction, to correct those who are in error. And it's an obligation that, uh, that people, not only people who are in authority over others are supposed to do, but, you know, each and every one of us, we can correct our peers. If, especially, especially if, uh, very, very clearly, their behaviors are sinful. Okay? It is part of our obligation. So, uh, I, would, I would encourage that we review these uh, corporal works of mercy and spiritual works of mercy. We can read all about it in the Catechism, Part 3 of the Catechism, in that chapter of life in Christ. Now, in our own family life, we do plenty of these things already. Right? Maybe we don't realize it, but we do plenty of these things. And what we should be doing, though, is to do it do these things more often more often especially here at home you know these 14 categories can actually be broken down into some more specific little things in our everyday life okay? like for example take the take the uh, take the example of um, you know uh, uh, giving advice or counseling the doubtful or uh, correcting those who are in error. Well, you can do that to your own brothers and sisters okay? with, the, with the things that they might not be doing right. See? Each one of us, no matter how old or how young, you can always do this among yourselves. And it is part of the work of mercy. Just remember one thing. Do it nicely. Be nice. Right? When you correct your brothers or sisters, be nice. Eh? What else? You can be patient with their, with their, with, with those who are annoying, especially, right? Uh, forgive those who offend you. Eh? Forgive. Learn to forgive. Don't keep grudges or anything like that. Oh. Pray for the living and the dead. You know, uh, uh, we we can pray for each other. Of course, we have to be praying for each other. And you know, folks, just uh, parenthetically here. Uh, well, one thing well, it says praying for the living and the dead right you know one thing that you can do and I would recommend we always do and which is a habit uh, my personal habit here is there are many dead people who have no one to pray for them no one so uh, and, and it, it's quite impossible to remember everybody who has died right or even everybody living who you want to pray for now the, the, uh, the, the trick so-called trick I use is I do a virtual intention where 
I tell our Lord that, okay, every person I know who dies, uh, I include them in that list of uh, dead people I, I pray for at Mass and the Rosary every day. See? So they get included somehow uh, in that virtual intention. So uh, if you worry sometimes about, oh, uh, I don't remember anymore who I pray for, and you know, well, at that moment when somebody asks for your prayers or you learn of somebody dying, Include them right away in your virtual intention list. You can, uh, you can make uh, that one big virtual intention statement to, to God and say that uh, you, know, you will just keep adding people to that list as they come along. But, but here is one thing uh, more concrete. You know, one of the, the, the classes of people that many times get left uh, unattended in terms of praying for them after they pass? Our grandparents. I, I wonder how many among you pray, continue to pray for the soul of your grandparents. That is something that I have kept as a personal pledge. Uh, that every day at Mass and during the Rosary, I mention my grandparents by name. And of course, I include my own mom who uh, has already joined them. But grandparents are, are those uh, that often get neglected and, uh, and uh, wonder who prays for them. So uh, as an act of charity um, and a spiritual work of mercy, for our grandparents, it would be a very, very good habit to pray for your grandparents by name when you attend Mass, when you pray the Rosary, uh, and ask and pray that they may uh, rest in peace and enjoy God's uh, heavenly kingdom if they are not there yet. Right? So, um, okay. So corporal works of mercy and spiritual works of mercy. That is how we are going to attend to the needs of our neighbors. Okay, folks, that's it for us today. I hope you have a good week ahead of you. And, uh, uh-oh, God bless you. Uh, take care. It's getting colder. It's a season for sickness and flu. I have some people hovering around me here. I guess they want to say... Bye! <laughs> okay. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a good day. Bye.